Hi everyone! The new 62 episode of Skibidi Toilets is finally out. In this video, I'll analyze the new episode, tell you where the action takes place, and what old video we already saw on this map. I'll show the traitor you may have missed. We'll break down all the secrets and Easter eggs, anything you might not have noticed. So as always, sit comfortably and watch till the end, so you don't miss the best part. Let's go! And we saw for the first time how engineers work and recover wounded agents. And damn, where did he put that welding machine? But I guess it's okay. It's the right thing to do. There's a reason Dafuk draws our attention to these two guys. Look at the sign. It's Group S6. It's actually the name of a security company from GTA. I noticed that their camera is the same as in the Grupa office in GTA 5. But most importantly, the old versions of the engineers are different. They definitely didn't have the writing, and the neck was a bit different. We'll come back to these guys later. For now, I'll show you some other secrets. In this ruined toilet, we can see the flushing system. We haven't usually been shown something like this in past episodes. There are strange packages scattered on the ground with a sign like this. If you recognize this company, write in the comments. It will help us know what country everything is taking place in. I'm thinking more about Arab countries. You'll see why. Notice that this cameraman here is drinking something from a cup. It's like his lower camera is his mouth. We've seen this in episode 19 and episode 36. Apparently, they can also eat through the lower camera. There's also a hint in this episode that the cameramen aren't robots, but I'll show you that later. As we can see, there are agents placed all over the location. They are just standing around or patrolling the buildings. It looks like this area has been completely taken over by the Alliance. All they have to do is just look for the remaining skibbity and entertain themselves. That's exactly what they're doing. Look at them throwing the toilet like a ball. By the way, it looks like this skibidi is blonde. But he was unlucky. The big speaker man did not calculate the force and threw him with a sound wave to the wall. They didn't seem to know how to do that before speaker woman appeared. I think she's some kind of new invention that was sent to help the alliance from the speakerman base. And this guy looks a lot like the first speaker man we saw. I assumed we saw him back in episode 59, but we didn't. These guys have very dark suits. And this guy is wearing a light gray suit, white shirt, and a black polka dot tie. So he's talking to the cameramen, maybe even about guns. Notice that only the cameramen have guns, the speaker men are unarmed. Maybe these guys were discussing the idea of arming all the speaker men with the same hypno guns. As we remember, while Titan was infected, the speaker men didn't fight for some reason. I guess they're just not trained to handle that kind of weapon. Now it's time to dive deeper. I'll show you something you probably didn't notice. Take a look at the license plates. First of all, these numbers are an Easter egg from Half-Life 2. They represent the zip code of a town in West Virginia called Freeman. In case you didn't know, the main character in this game is named Gordon Freeman. We saw him a lot in the early episodes. But that's not the whole meaning. Also, the number 24 is written separately. And in this episode, we saw exactly this speaker man. I also tried adding all the numbers together, and it came out to 19. And you're going to be shocked. But in episode 19, we first saw this guy with a cup of soda or something. But I also decided to dig a little deeper and add up all the numbers to the left and right of the dot. 2 plus 4 makes 6. 2 plus 4 plus 7 makes 13. 1 plus 3 makes 4. Then together, it's 46. And you know, I'm not crazy. That's exactly the car we see in this episode. At first, I didn't understand how these episodes were connected. But then I had a theory. I'll tell you that later. Note that when the Skibidi toilets showed up, everyone just stood there. No one tried to attack them with a gun. I think the Skibidi haven't been in this place for a while, and the agents are just not used to fighting. They're just standing there, stumped and watching. Now pay attention to this poster right here. You're going to be surprised, but I recognize this map from it. We've seen this poster in this video, America 2. Now I'm going to show you this map from a different angle so you can better understand what's going on. You see this house right here with the balconies. This is where the POV cameraman, or the person in the short video America, is located. In this episode, the town is filled with people and Skibidi Obama along with soldiers invades here. It seems very much like a reference to Iraq or Libya. I didn't find any signs of a specific country though, so maybe the allusion is generally to US aggressive policy in the East. At the very beginning of the video, there is a little G-man dancing on the window. There are two toilets in the house opposite each other. By the way, the first second's male 07 is smiling, but then his face turns dramatically serious. Pay attention to this blue car. 
I can assume that it is the destroyed one that stands in the 60-second episode of Skibidi Toilets. This poster here is the cover of the album Outside the Gate by Killing Joke. That album contains the exact same song that plays in this video. America. But since the song was released in 1988, it doesn't apply to Obama, since he wasn't president then. And on this one, I was able to translate this caption. Say hello an unjust world. Interestingly, the translator can recognize it only from a certain angle. I had to direct the phone camera during the slow playback of the video. But it doesn't matter. The point is clear. The U.S. has pursued an aggressive policy in the East. And Dafouk once again mocks this injustice. That's the woman on the poster, by the way. And this is the building where cameraman threw the skibidi toilet out of the window. The gray speaker man and the cameraman stood somewhere near these boxes. Anyway, I can see that at the end of the short video, America seems to have taken over this location, and now the cameramen are standing here. I think the alliance is associated with the US, but I can't know exactly what Dafuk meant. Maybe it has nothing to do with the real world. Now you can get a better look at the location, and we'll go back to analyzing episode 62. Notice that the building in the distance is tilting like it's about to fall. There's black smoke all around like a TV man teleporting. But it's Skibidi scientists teleporting, as we saw in episode 60. It's now clear that he doesn't fly, but walks on iron legs. Notice that his earliest inventions are Skibidi spiders and parasites. They all walk on mechanical legs as well. And now he's made himself like a giant parasite, which is very ironic. I don't understand what exploded right here. All we see before the explosion is Skibidi scientists' iron leg. But unfortunately, the gray speaker man was right next to the explosion. I hope he and the cameraman ran into the building to get away from the sound. Notice that the big speaker man ran. Now everyone realized they were in danger. The huge speakers on the Skibidi scientist's chest are stunning everyone around them. Notice that all the Skibidi toilets are wearing headphones. By the way, what's about sunglasses or other eye protection? Yeah, the TV men haven't attacked the Skibidi in a while since their Titan is injured. Maybe it's just like when Titan Speakerman was infected, all the Speakermen were hiding. But maybe it's something else because the TV men didn't disappear. And then the POV cameraman turns around and there are headphones in front of him, even though no one around him had them. I'm pretty sure this agent is the traitor, but we can't figure out who it is. You see everyone trying to run away and they're stunned. The one in front of us doesn't run. He doesn't care about the loud noise. Also notice that Skibidi Scientist doesn't attack him or POV Cameraman. Skibidi Strider comes out from around the corner. He looks right at us but doesn't attack. The Scientist just walks farther away, even though he was looking at us the whole time. It seems that the Skibidi know that the TV men are streaming what the POV Cameraman sees. The Skibidi didn't destroy him on purpose, so he'd show the whole scene to the Titans and scare them. Therefore, this mystery guy was definitely helping them do that. He wasn't destroyed because he's on the Skibidi toilet side. He had headphones beforehand and he knew the plan, so he gave the headphones to the POV cameraman. Let's assume who that might be. In fact, it could be any regular agent. For example, this is where the speakerman sits, but he's probably not the traitor. Theory 1. TV man is the traitor. He teleported behind our back and threw the headphones on the floor. I've already said many times why they're suspicious. I don't think I need to repeat myself. Theory 2 is about these engineers over here. They don't look like they used to. Maybe they're the ones who are fake. And then we see these two mutants. We'll talk about them later, but they're made from agents. So the Skibidi toilets capture them, which means someone could be betraying the Alliance and helping the toilets to survive. And it could be anyone. So for some reason, Dafouk focuses our attention on these two guys at the beginning. They have weird stickers on their cameras. But also these guys haven't been in the frame since the very first shots. Their helicopter is on the roof here, so they should have gone to it, but they didn't. They're also not among the destroyed cameramen. The engineers could have gone into the building, put on headphones, and when it all started, threw one pair to us. And then there's the third theory, which is the craziest. There's a reason I told you about episode 46, where we could be referred to by the license plates. There's a secret agent standing next to the same blue car, and I'm not sure if it's Dafouk. He seems to have black pants and a blue blazer, and Dafouk has a black one. Anyway, this secret agent could be helping Skibidi toilets and giving headphones to us. Now let's turn our attention to G-Man. His face is still as battered as ever, but his eyes have gone white. And when I realized that, I got goosebumps. Remember in episode 60 when the Astro Toilets attacked G-Man? 
I assumed it was because he brought the cameramen with him, but the scientist defended him, as if he thought G-Man could be trusted. But as we remember, he did see the cameramen. What if the scientist only pretended to trust G-Man, but he actually did something to his brain in the lab? Why we don't see G-Man's eyes anymore? Maybe the scientist decided G-Man was a traitor too, but couldn't destroy him. He had to brainwash G-Man to keep him alive, but he certainly didn't betray Skibidi. And when I look at that scene and see G-Man's hopeful look, it's creepy to imagine such a thing. But somehow his eyes are white now. By the way, there's no flame coming out of his jetpack's turbine, I guess they just forgot to add it. Note that G-Man was given the old lasers, like in episode 38. He used to have wider guns and sticking sights around. It looks like the scientist reset him to the default settings of the improved version. It's kind of sad because we know he's not a traitor. Maybe G-Man's also blind, by the way. Notice how this cameraman starts to go up in smoke after he falls. That's the guy those engineers were repairing. Maybe he was intentionally soldered wrong and now he's broken badly. When G-Man shoots lasers at this building, one of the cameramen falls out of the window. And this is a funny-looking invention. It's an airplane with so wide wings that they need their own rotors. Note that huge cannon in our favorite sussy spot. I don't understand why they would drop bombs on this location. Maybe it's also a reference to the U.S. or something. Notice that the engineers' helicopters explode, but we don't see the projectiles. The last time we saw something like that was from Titan Cameraman's cannon shots. By the way, he threw his cannon away in episode 55 when it was ignited by radioactive smoke. Maybe the Skibidi picked it up and rebuilt it. Anyway, I don't see anyone shooting around. And we saw an early version of this mutant in episode 33, but his fingers were long and he moved kind of nervously. This version goes smoothly and his hands are normal. Apparently it's another Skibidi scientist technology. He has a gray armored toilet now and this guy next to him seems to be made from a big cameraman, only enlarged. We can see how much smaller the original was. He also looks similar to the big TV man in size, but his shirt is white, while TV man has a dark shirt. Notice that when the big cameraman is ripped in half, there's more than just electricity. What is that, robot oil? I don't think so. The hint is that the agents are half robot, half human. This is definitely not the same mutant from episode 33, because he was destroyed in episode 37 by the cured big speakerman. Notice how this mutant picks up the camera with his hand and is about to saw it off. Maybe he also wants the tapes. Maybe he needs to report to his management, which means there are Skibidi bosses more important than the scientist. That's all for now. Hope you've joined my Discord server. Put likes, subscribe to the channel, and that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!